Today I'm in Charing Cross, an area so small it may literally just be one tiny traffic island, and yet there's so much to do here. I'm sure we'll find something. So I stepped out into a clear, icy February morning and made my way towards Zone 1. It's too cold for this. And I thought I'd start at the riverside. Now every millennial worth their salt knows just down to the side of Charing Cross Station is a wine bar called Gordon's Wine Bar. And if you ever sat around and thought to yourself... <sighs> I really must go to London's oldest wine bar then you probably come here. It's situated in the ancient basement of a building that's no longer here called York House and that's where this thing comes into it. Until the embankment was built the north bank of the Thames used to be not over there but all the way over there and in fact that is the water gate for York House where one would get onto and off of one's boat one imagines should one live there. Yes. These paintings show what it looked like before the embankment was built and actually there could easily be a whole video on that subject. In fact, that's not a bad idea. I'll be back. Meanwhile, the embankment has provided for us a sewer, an underground railway and uh, somewhere for office workers to eat their lunch in the summer. Now, this could be my favourite fact of the video. You see, when York House was demolished, the guy who owned the land, George Villiers, the Duke of Buckingham, uh, sold it for about £30,000. But he added a stipulation to the terms of the sale, which was that the roads that were going to be cut through it uh, should all be named after him. They should all be named after him. And so we ended up with George Court, Villiers Street, Duke Street, Ov Alley, and Buckingham Street. I just love Ov Alley. Some of those streets, and though it breaks my heart, that includes Of Alley, have been renamed. But if you want to be remembered somehow, buy a plot of land and name every single road after yourself. So why is it called Charing Cross? Well, the Charing bit could come from the old English word for bend in the river. Da, 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 da. But maybe it's from the French, Chagrin. I don't speak I don't French. French meaning Dear Queen, um, although that's somehow less satisfying. And the Royal Connection isn't so much to do with queens, but more to do with horses, because it was this land uh, through Trafalgar Square up to Leicester Square that were where the original Royal Mews were, or the, the Royal Stables, before they were moved a few centuries later to Buckingham Palace. But the cross bit's a bit easier. Now, cast your mind back to the reign of Edward I. He's a man who's famous for one day deciding he didn't really like Scotland. I don't really like Scottish people and that he was going to take over the country and on a different day deciding he didn't really like Jewish people I didn't really like Jewish people and he was going to kick them all out of England um, anyway at the tender age of 14 he married a girl called Eleanor of Castile uh, and sadly in 1290 she died and, and he was absolutely gutted I am absolutely gutted so he had a, a funeral procession throughout the country and in every place that her dead body stopped for the night he placed a memorial cross. The grandest of which was placed here. Except not here because this one's a Victorian fake. The real one was torn down during the English Civil War and replaced with that statue of Charles I. And in fact, that little traffic pile in there, that's the only real bit of Charing Cross. That, that's literally it. And Charing Cross, that statue of Charles I is used as the geographic centre of London. So if you're, say, at a road sign saying 150 miles to London, you're 150 miles from me right now. Probably a safe distance. A bit like how an entire generation knows George Foreman only as some kind of weight loss grill expert, Charing Cross is now pretty much exclusively known as a railway station. And it's now the 14th busiest railway station in the country. Is that the best fact that we've got, the 14th busiest? It is the best fact. And it's now the 14th busiest railway station in the country. Um, it was built in 1864 uh, by the South Eastern Railway Company, who you might remember from the Blackfriars video. Um, they built Blackfriars Royal Railway Station at the same time as they built this one to connect their lines of London Bridge through to the very centre of metropolitan London. The original station was a lot nicer looking, largely in account of its nice arched roof. Uh, the one we have today is a replacement of the replacement roof. The original one collapsed in 1905 and this one's a lot safer and more budget friendly if artistically dead. 
Two men working on the roof at the time lost their lives, along with the WH Smith worker and three people who were constructing the neighbouring Playhouse Theatre. Where coincidentally Matthew Perry's dreams of being a playwright died circa 2016. The site of today's station is built on land that for centuries was owned by the Hungerford family and they used to have a grand house here, uh, which somewhat unsurprisingly for London burnt down. In its place in the 1600s they built a covered market here, which didn't do all that well and so in the 1800s it was refreshed again in a manner quite similar to what Covent Garden Market looks like, this kind of nice Italianate style. I'm told it's Italianate, I really don't know. Eventually the granddaddy of British engineering, Eisenbard Kingdom Brunel, built a suspension footbridge from Lambeth across to the new market to try and improve footfall uh, but unfortunately again it didn't work the market didn't succeed and again part of it burnt down uh, so the whole thing was eventually flattened so that the railway station could be built. The bridge you see today is not the original but in what I think might be history's first ever recorded moment of recycling the chains were used to build the Clifton suspension bridge in Bristol. A distance I'm not personally prepared to travel to for a three second shot and the brick bases were reused for the new railway bridge. The tube here is worth a look in as well though, not least because the stations around Charing Cross couldn't decide for 70 years what they should be named. And as well as some nice YouTube videos, there's a representative table from Wikipedia on that particular subject. What I really love though is that through those doors behind me is more escalators that lead down to the abandoned platforms of the Jubilee Line which used to terminate here until 1999 when the Jubilee Line was diverted and extended through uh, Westminster, Waterloo, Stratford etc. The platforms are still there and in fact you can take a tour of them like I did, which as well as showing you the ghostly platforms includes a construction tunnel that still runs underneath Trafalgar Square and a trip inside a massive ventilation funnel which on the outside is completely hidden in plain sight. In recent years Charing Cross has changed a bit. PwC have taken over some of the basements and then put a building that literally squats on top of the railway station, although you can see the nod to the original curved roof shape, which isn't too bad. When it was originally built, underneath the arches of the station used to exist a combination of wine cellars, lock-ups and a few businesses, but largely it was home to the down and out of London, a place to sleep rough. George Orwell, when he was staying in the hotel behind me, noted that the area was home to so-called Nancy boys, who could be fine meeting each other and having sex in the dark corners of the undercroft of Charing Cross Station. Little would he have imagined that the gay youth of London still find their way to the underbelly of this station, except now they pay £10 to get in, and there's a lot more Britney Spears. And finally, the market lives on in Charing Cross because behind me, down some stairs, every Saturday is a fair that sells coins and stamps and other bits of ephemera to collectors and kids and American tourists who are trying to find their way to the tube. And whether they know it or not, they are holding a market on the same site where a market has been going on for 330 years. So there you have it, Charing Cross, many things to many people. but. Do you know, I sincerely don't know how to end any video.